they not ready. Welcome to Real Talk Radio, the show that says just because you don't attend with them does not mean that you're not in him. The him being Jesus, the show that plants seeds and water seeds, but God gives the increase. Let's talk about it on Real Talk Radio. This show is a continuation of the church folk revolution. Enjoy the show. Everybody, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Real Talk Radio. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about spiritual warfare. This is our second show on this subject. We actually did a show on it early, early in um, Real Talk Radio's history. I think it was our second show, our first show, or something like that. Um, but today we are talking about spiritual warfare, what it is, what it isn't, all the misconceptions of spiritual warfare. The devil made me do it. Let's go bind up some devils and all that good stuff. So thank you for tuning in to this episode of Real Talk Radio. And let me pray before we really get started. Um, Father, we just thank you. For this yet another day, another opportunity to come before your people, Father. We pray that something will be said on this radio show that will help someone, Father God, get a better understanding of what spiritual warfare is, Father God. Uh, that they will come out of a misconception about what it is, Father God. We pray that they not look at us or take our words forward, but Father God, that they will go into the scriptures and study it for themselves. Because it's never about us. It's always about you. We give you all the praise, honor, and all of the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Boy, you put a heavy emphasis on that. All of the glory. Because, <laughs> <laughs> man, because I don't, I don't want, I'm not trying to steal none of his glory. I don't, and I don't want people, and I don't know if they, you know, to look at us as if we are somehow special or, or, or you know, like we know it. No, man, we, we just. We just four brothers on the radio show, everyday dudes. That's it. We regular dudes. That's it. And I don't want nobody looking at us or putting us on the pedestal. Um, oh man, they know it. No man, we just we just regular dudes, man. That's that's all I was saying. Yeah. That's it. So go ahead and take over, Elgin. Today, boys and girls, uh, we are going to be talking about spiritual warfare. As the homie Nathan spoke, man, he talked about how we actually, we did this show early on in the beginning of <laughs> Real Talk Radio. I think this was like our, our second or third show that we put out together. Uh, but it's still something that needs to be addressed and dealt with, man. Because what I hear a lot, man, is I hear a lot of responsibility for problems, issues, situations being placed upon the enemy's shoulders. You know, your car breaks down, oh man, the devil's busy. You know, you have a relationship issues, man, you let the devil in. You know, all of these things are attributed to the enemy. And a lot of times, it's simply decisions and choices that we've made with our flesh that has turned these situations into what they really are. And that doesn't say that there is no, I'm not in any way, shape, or form saying that there is no enemy, because I believe there is. I, be, I believe Satan, devil, whatever name you want to throw out to him, is a very real individual. Uh, I, I will never downplay that. But within Christianity, he has been given more power uh, an authority than he fully deserves. And when I say give him more power and more authority, that doesn't mean that he has that. It's just that the blame for things is constantly thrown his way. That for many Christians within the church actually believe that the devil is Jesus' uh, equal or arch enemy. 
you know, on some Batman Joker type stuff, you know, Superman Lex Luthor, like, they're equal of power, that type of things, and that's a very dangerous misunderstanding and misconception, and one that we will deal with on the show. Rob, the past goes to you, brother. Don't drop it. All right. Yeah, man. Um, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to addressing the misconception, man, because if you really think about it, uh, you know how we say that uh, we over-spiritualize things, like, uh, for example, um, putting a New Testament spin on an Old Testament uh, concept, like, for just for example, the armor bearer thing, how we over-spiritualize certain things. And like you said, in churchianity, man, that's a, an example of over-spiritualizing stuff when you say, oh, well, my car broke down, the, the water pump demon must be attacking my car right now, you know. So I'm definitely looking forward to destroying some of those misconceptions, man, and definitely touching on, um, you know, just knowing, I know we, we kicked around uh, subtitle in this show, Knowing Your Enemy. I want to definitely... Uh, you know, talk about that and, um, you know, just stay, you know, we just stay prayerful about this whole thing, man, and the Holy Spirit will lead us and, and guide us into all truth without the misconception. So let's open it up, fellas. All right. Uh, I also wanted to, you know, talk about stuff. We're going to talk about the armor of God, um, getting in Ephesians, uh, wrestling not against flesh and blood, uh, casting out demons, uh, all these different things we're going to try to tackle um, in this uh, two-hour segment we have, and uh, we'll open up the phone lines a little bit later. If you want to call in and chime in, the number is going to be 661-449-9951. And real quick, uh, uh, <clears throat> let me start off uh, by saying a lot of times um, we like to, I think you guys said it already, we like to take responsibility off of ourselves and our own actions and put it, on the devil we like to pass the buck you know pass the blame on to someone else or something else and that's been going on since uh the first book in the bible since genesis when god came down uh and to find uh adam and eve when uh they heard the voice of the lord walking in the cool of the day uh and god asked adam what have you done and the first thing adam did uh, he blamed God and he blamed Eve <laughs> for what happened. What do you mean how he blamed God? He said, the woman you gave me. So he, he blamed God <laughs> and then he blamed Eve. The woman you gave me, the woman you gave me, gave me to eat and I did eat. Um, so, you know, the, the passing of buck, the blame game has been going on since the beginning of time and it's still going on today. Uh, you know, we talked about on the first show how, you know, we like to blame things on demons. Uh, that, that lust demon got me. Yeah, he got a lust demon. Uh, or the greed demon got him. Uh, you know, and instead of looking at ourselves, a lot of the things that happen are works of the flesh. They're works of the flesh that we tend to blame on a demon and we have to get out of that mentality to take some responsibility for our own actions that was me I was drawn away from the lust and the desires in my own heart yeah. but instead of me looking at myself I want to blame the devil the devil made me do it you know how we see in the cartoons you got the angel on one shoulder and the devil on yeah. the one other shoulder right. it, it, it's almost the same thing that's your, you fighting with your conscience um, and a lot of times, uh, 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 the devil side wins. Uh, but Paul even talked about that in Romans when he said, you know, uh, um, the good that I would do, I don't do, and the evil that I wouldn't do, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, it comes from our flesh. You know, it, it's the sin that's within us. That's within us. But we, again, we always like to blame the devil, and just to start off early, I think that, in essence, is the spirit. That is what spiritual warfare is. It's our own fight against our own fleshly and lustful desires that we have. Yeah, and I, and I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think one of the things that that people get caught up with is. A lot of times within the church uh, setting, man, and this is not a, 
a church attack or church uh, bashing statement here. It's just an indication of what people have experienced. Oftentimes, because of the the error within teaching, people leave feeling like uh, the devil is actually the one that's behind all the bad things going on in their life and not having a healthy understanding that, yes, the enemy can influence things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He has the ability to do that. But you, within you, there is something that has that's always had a hold in you, some conflict, some war. So what he's influencing is actually that thing within you. But you have to be able to take responsibility for that. And because of the error within teaching, not a clear teaching of the gospel, people have left feeling oftentimes that if I go up to the altar, get this anointing oil on my head, get some hands laid upon me, have somebody pray that, that, that smoking demon up off of me, you know, that, that lust demon, that drinking demon off of me, then, you know, I, I, I'll be able to make it. But what happens is Tuesday night, when they have a bad day at work, they start sipping and taking a couple shots of Hennessy. They pick up a pack of Newports. They, they put the porn in. They do all these things, and then once they get finished doing those activities, mm -hmm. they feel as if the enemy has come back even more. He, he's even stronger now, and they run to an out-of-context scripture by saying, oh, man, they, they cast out one. Now there's a legion of these things that then came in and got me. But if they can actually understand that their greatest battle is with themselves, with themselves, and the power and the victory is given through the Spirit, everything changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and the problem that we have is we try to fight these things on our own, in our own power, in our own might. We try to get over these issues that we have within ourselves, by our own strength, instead of relying on God to do it. Because I, I, I believe if you are struggling with these things, if, if, if you are fighting it and you are feeling guilty about it and you're like, man, I can't believe I did it, I, then you are still on the right path. Uh, but once you don't even care more, when you begin to just get callous about it, oh, I did, that ain't nothing happened to me yet. Then, then that's why I believe when you are in serious trouble. But if you're fighting it and, and you don't want to do these things and your conscience is nagging at you, you, and I don't know how to tell you how to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. All I can say is do it. I don't have a step-by-step -step ABC 1, 2, 3 plan for you to do besides uh, praying and communing uh, uh, with God. Um, I don't have a 1, 2, 3 step for you. Uh, and that's just me, and I could be wrong on that, but... Once you have to rely on the power of God to take those things from you. And, and it's only by through his power, through his might, right. not in your own strength. Because we always say, I ain't going to do that no more. I ain't going to do it no more. I, you know, I, I promise, promise God, if, if, if you get me out of this one, I ain't going to do it. You know, we rely on our own power and our own strength to do some of the things that we don't want to do. But go ahead, man. Go ahead, Rob. No, I was just saying that, um, you know, uh, trying to, you know, not pass the buck and 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 not, uh, when you say responsibility as far as um, what, you know, in our own power, the only thing we can do is pray about it. You know what I mean? So when we talk about, um, you know, passing the buck and, you know, blaming other people or not blaming other people, I think it's going to be a recurrent and, and uh, uh, common theme uh, throughout the show. We definitely have to, you know, rely on the power of God, like you said. I'm just totally agreeing with what you just said, man, because um, there's nothing you can do in your own power. It's by the, only by the might of God, man. So I think we're going to definitely be touching on that a lot today. Mm -hmm. Elgin Gown. I would encourage people, man, and this is in battles that I've had in the past and struggles that I still deal with, what I have the understand is I'm not fighting for victory. I'm fighting mm -hmm. from victory. I already, sin has already been defeated. Jesus' work is finished, is completed, is done. It's finished. 
So I'm fighting from a standpoint of already having it instead of trying to achieve it. So when I when you change that mentality and you that that it, your focus gets shifted, like yo, I've already beat the, this thing's already been conquered. Like yo, now I just have to put in the the, the focus and do things to prevent me from being there and understanding that hey. Jesus finished us. I, I just got to rely on the spirit here not to get caught up instead of, man, I got to achieve, I got to fight for the victory. I got to, no, because that's where the works comes in. That That's where that, that works righteous mentality comes in when I'm feeling like I have to do all these good deeds, stopping sin and all these things in order for Jesus to help. It, and it just it just is a a, a a gerbil on a spinning wheel type mentality where you just kind of find yourself constantly being defeated. But if you understand, man, that you already have the victory, it, it changes your focus. And, bruh, well, the one thing that I want people to understand is we're not saying that your spiritual battles on any level are easy. That it's just a, a prayer away for that matter. We're not saying that. What we're trying to convey to people is what spiritual warfare really is. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. smash some of the misconceptions. One of them joints is people always say, well, you got to get the devil up out of your house. As if the devil is able to be at your house, somebody else's house, all that. And scripture is not doesn't state what the enemy can do. And one of the only places that the scripture where you get a, a clear indication of what the enemy is able to do is when you read Job in the beginning where Job is, you know, doing his thing and the enemy is coming through and, and God is like, yo, where you been? And then he was like, yo, I'm going to and fro, you know, seeking whom I can chew up and who I can deal with. But the God actually gives him permission. Now, I'm not going to make that statement to say that every time that the enemy is dealing with something, he's had to have permission from God for it. I, I don't think Scripture explicitly makes that statement. But what it does explicitly state is the enemy doesn't have the same power as God has. God is all powerful, far more powerful than the enemy is, man. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let, let me read the scripture. I'm gonna read it in a couple different um, translations, different translations, uh, because it goes directly to uh, spiritual warfare. Second uh, Corinthians 10. Uh, I'm gonna read out of the um, King James version first, and I'm gonna read out of New Living Translation, um, and I just like that translation. Second uh, uh, Corinthians 10, starting at verse three. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Uh, now let me read this in the uh, New Living Translation. I think it gives a, 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 a different, well, almost the same. Well, you be the judge. We are human, but we do not wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And I think that that gives a different, almost a different understanding to that scripture, uh, what it tells you what those weapons are for. Um, uh, it says, knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and destroying false arguments. Um, now, we have always taken that, I, and I'll speak for myself, I have always taken that to mean spiritual warfare, where we're going looking for demons to fight, yeah, yeah, where we yeah. go out um, to uh, 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 find demons that are, quote-unquote, over cities and over provinces and over places. Uh, 
Uh, you know, we believe that there were the demons assigned to you as an individual, to your street, to your uh, county, uh, to your uh, uh, state, over your country, over your region. And, you know, it's your job to go uh, um, and fight these devils that have this stronghold. Let's say if you live in uh, um, Las Vegas then, you know, you have that strong gambling and addiction demon. So it is the, the church's community, church's job in that community to go out and fight those demons in, in, in that community. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just trying to yeah, illustrate yeah, 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 yeah. how we, we would take that. You, those scriptures, especially the King James Version, all we use is the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And, and we take that to say that, so what are the weapons? I'm asking, what are the weapons? And what are they for? And I think if you read it in the New Living Translation, it gives a better understanding of what those weapons are for. It's for the destroying uh, 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 or the knockdown of the strongholds of human reasoning of our own, in our own minds. And it goes back to what we said earlier. The, the spiritual warfare is, is each individual believer's uh, uh, battle against their own flesh. Yeah. Yeah. In their own reasoning, and, in the, and to destroy false arguments. That's what those weapons are for. They're not go out and, and, and go demon hunting. Yeah. And that's what I believe a lot of people believe that spiritual warfare is, is demon hunting. And I'm going to ask you guys a question later. Uh, I'll just ask it now. Maybe we can get to it. Is casting out demons and devils the same thing as spiritual warfare? No. Is it the same thing? Rob. No. Go ahead, Rob. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, I don't. I just, you know, um, because when we let's look at uh, when, we, when you think about Ephesians um, six twelve, right? Um, is that actually? Because I think that's what you know. That's one of the one of the proof texts that a lot of people go to to. Um, you know, to, to to justify, for lack of a better term right now, um, the idea that you were saying that we have to actually go out and and actually look for these these demons that are assigned over, you know, uh, certain cities and areas and stuff and actually fight them. Um, mm -hmm. But that's not, that's talking about, uh, that's not actually talking about warring against demons. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I mean, what, what's, what's do you have it up? Let me see. We were going, I was going to get to it a little earlier. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't mean to, mean to cut you off. But, no, that's okay. I mean, since we're here. <laughs> well, let's, let's handle it. Right. Uh, that, let me read. I got it up. Um, okay. It, it I actually going to start yeah. up. Go we're going to actually start up. Um, I'm going to start at verse 10. Okay. What are your readings? Ephesians 6, 10. Uh, this is about the armor of God. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 6, starting at verse 10. Uh, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. In his mighty power. Put right, on all right. of God's armor so you will be able to stand firm against stand. all strategies of the devil. That's what it says, stand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put right. on every piece of God's armor, so you will be able to resist the enemy in the mm -hmm. time of evil. Then after the battle, mm -hmm. you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt right. of truth and the body of armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. A couple of things that stood out is he told them to stand twice. Right. At the beginning, at the end, he said stand, to stand firm right. and resist. Stand and resist. So from that, 
from my understanding, that when you put on armor of God, those are defensive weapons. Right. The only offensive weapon is the sword, which is what? The word of God. Word which of we God. ought to wield. Which we ought to wield is the word of God. Jesus, yep. But most of it is, is defensive, standing, resisting. Uh, I think it's in James, correct me if I'm wrong, it says resist the devil and he will flee. Yeah. Resist. Yeah. You don't have to go out demon hunting. Because <clears throat> you don't have to do that. you got to worry about uh, your own flesh. And if you're going yeah. out fighting demons, you're not only fighting demons, but you're also fighting your flesh. Why go search out for more fights? When mm -hmm. I know for me, my flesh is enough. I, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but that's enough of a battle. And and the right. way that the churchianity has set it up is that when we discuss flesh, it's only certain things that we tend to want to attribute to the flesh. We want to attribute sexual things. We want to attribute, mm -hmm. you know, quote unquote, big things big sense to the flesh but when flesh can simply be that when you feel as though you're attacking your response to that attack can be yeah, geared yeah. and founded in your flesh now i'm gonna be the last person okay <laughs> to, to act like uh sexual issues and sexual things are not flesh issues i, I don't want to give anybody that impression either but what i'm saying is we have to actually allow scripture to be the standard our plumb line, meaning that when we go to address topics and issues, Scripture and the Holy Spirit are what leads us and, and, and gives us the knowledge and the understanding on what we are encountering. If you are sitting there and you feel like you got to, and, and let me tell you, I mean, I think I shared this on the last show, that early on in, in my faith, uh, you know, I was influenced by a lot of churchianity, as I think most of us was. And I remember I moved into a new apartment. And the pastor uh, wanted to come by the apartment and pray over the apartment. And so he came by to the apartment and he brought his, you know, his quote-unquote anointing oil. And he went around all the, the, you know, the doorways in the apartment anointing the doorways. You know, and mm. each time he would take some of the oil, he would, you know, anoint it and he would say a prayer. And he would, you know, say how he wanted all these particular and specific demons to stay up out of my crib you know he wanted to, the, the lust demon to stay out and, and to do all these different type of things now let me let, let me just keep it all the way 100 it didn't work man it was more <laughs> more sexual things taking place more drinking and debauchery which i love that word by the way that was taking place in my apartment at that Crazy. time you know what i'm saying but but that's yeah it wasn't the the, the, the anointing oil didn't fail his prayer didn't fail. It was just the reason why it didn't work is because he was fighting the air. He wasn't fighting the actual thing that needed to be take place. What he should have done is he should have went and got uh, some chicken and some Kool-Aid and sat me down on the couch and said, listen, you a single male within the church system. Underwear is going to be thrown at you consistently from women in the church. These are some of the issues that you're going to be dealing with by your – he should have had that kind of conversation preparing me for the spiritual warfare that I was going to be fighting, which was nothing more than my flesh. Mm -hmm. There was no lust mm -hmm. demon that came through and visited me at 2 o'clock in the morning. That, that was right. what was going on in my body that made me respond that way. So, so that's where the misconceptions and the problems also, 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 always takes place, man. Just those misconceptions and a lack of honesty. Just before I pass it, if he, as a, as a, as a man, would have came and said, Elgin, I know what it's like to be a young preacher within the church. I was there once. I was once a young minister. I, you know, I was charismatic. I had all these things going for me. You know, people love what I said and all these type of things. If I want to warn you and let you know of the dangers that are coming your way, some of the issues you're going to face, I think that would have done more than the so-called anointing oil on my doorframe, which actually did nothing. So is yeah. that a form of spiritual warfare, putting anointing oil? 
on everything and uh, uh, oh, man. marched around the walls of Jericho and uh, prayer marches and stuff like that? Or is it too it's early? Work. We get into that a little bit later. Right, so we here. We probably nah, here. I was gonna let Rob respond. Go ahead, Rob. Rob been kind of. No, I, I mean, I just, I just got, I just got um, a, a personal thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's along those same lines. I did the whole um, oil, you know, slathering oil on the door. You know, you know, really, what just happened was I slathered oil on the door. You know what I mean? Because it, you know, <laughs> leading into what you're talking about, Nathan. Um, the prayer marches and and this that and the third and and, and slathering oil on your head with the, you know making the little cross with the oil and you know putting the oil on the door it's just it's works man it's not spiritual warfare it gets it, it goes right down into that into that works thing man because really um, let, let's take the oil because like a churchy man I don't know if this happened with you L but um, man when I was knee deep in churchianity bro I, I actually took a bottle of olive oil. To the church and had one of the elders <laughs> this is, this sounds funny now one of the elders like hold the bottle and, and pray over it right and I bought I bought this supernaturally holy oil now you know what I mean <laughs> just a bottle of uh, of, of extra, extra virgin. virgin olive oil yeah that's all it was you know what I'm doing with that very same bottle right now I'm cooking you better be cooking anyway you better um, be cooking with it bro <laughs> it's in my kitchen right now. I'm cooking with that same bottle of oil. I'm cooking with it. Anyway, I'm picking um, so yeah, exact food line, same thing. So I, I took, I actually took this bottle to the church and had an elder hold it and pray over it. And now it's it's got it's glowing and now it's just extra holy now. And I brought it home and slathered it on my doors and you know trying to keep demons out and. And that's all I did. It was I just you know oiled up my doors real nice and 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 uh, it cost me really, money because it took the paint off my door joints. I had to paint <laughs> to get the landlord right. to put some fresh paint up on that joint. <laughs> so I lost that spiritual yeah. battle. I was hot. Go ahead. Wow, but nah, man, it's just you know when the only thing I really should have been doing was praying, man, the whole time, you know, and, and relying on Jesus Christ. So what what I did was I, I relied on somebody else to transfer some type of supernatural, you know, uh, power ranger holiness into the, into this uh, bottle of olive oil and to bring it home. And like, that was going to keep, you, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. you, you mean, you know what I mean? Uh, keep my sure. flesh under subjection and, and keep all of that, you know, demons out and all that when I really just should have been praying. So, Mm -hmm. To segue into what you're talking about, Nathan, man, all of that stuff, you know, uh, marching around, uh, this new building that we want, you know what I mean? All of that stuff. It's just, it's just, it just works, man. It's just stuff. Yeah, it's just I, doing I, stuff that's doing. I think we use that as one of the weapons of our warfare is, is that mm -hmm. anointing oil. Uh, we call it anointing oil. Uh, you know, it's primarily used in the old, uh, old uh, covenant where you can read, uh, where they use the oil, uh, or you can read where uh, Samuel anointed uh, David to be king, and you know he actually poured oil, and it talks about how the oil ran from Aaron's beard, you know, even down to the hem of his garment. Um, and we've carried that over, and we've assigned a special uh, thing, a spiritual aspect to olive oil. And you know when you uh, put oil on your kids' heads, or when you uh, oil up like Elgin's uh, pastor did his his doors and his house and all this stuff. All you've done is put oil on things, because there's no power at all in that anointing. And, and I could I I'm willing to say that that borders on witchcraft, exactly. because you, you you're putting this as some kind of spiritual barrier. Um, to keep out demons and devils, uh, and, and I will be willing to say that, that that is a form of witchcraft. When we think about it, you come back to it, you know, you, you put an oil on your kids' head to keep them protected during their school day as you send them out. Or when you come, like Elder had that story, I had this exact same story when I moved into my very first house where we came and we had uh, – a pastor come over. Well, my pastor couldn't come, so one of the other elders came over, and they came and they prayed over the house, and they anointed every single door, every single window, opened up doors, 
and told the devil to get out and he ain't got no place in here and then she prophesied to us that it's a she seen a dark gray cloud over the house and all this stuff and there was depression in the house and all all this good old stuff mm -hmm. but basically all she did was <laughs> put oil on things and say a prayer and we've assigned too much meaning to vir extra virgin olive oil and I don't know why we want the extra virgin olive oil <laughs> like the virgin olive oil ain't enough. Yeah, we, I ain't gonna go down that path I'm gonna <laughs> stay away from that one uh, <laughs> but it, it, this is one of those reasons why I'm gonna follow up with the manipulation aspect the witchcraft the reason why these tactics are so successful is because your flesh loves them. Your flesh loves rules, structure, all those things. They may not want to stay within the rules and structure, but it strives for that very thing. When your flesh gets that, sees your pastor, put the anointing on your head, it makes you feel like you have victory. But the spirit is like, oh, you already got it. It just gives you a sense, a feeling that you have gotten and gathered something to fight with. But when the reality of it is, you don't need any of that. And it's so sad because people go up to the altar, man, and just using the altar as a frame of reference, they go up to the altar, and I was one of those people at a time in my life where I would go to the altar, man, would seem like, every other dog on Sunday, but I'm going up there yep. and using me as a reference for the same dog on thing. The same thing. It got to a point where I, I would go to the same person all the time because, you know, the first time I done spoken to your ear and told you the issues that I was facing. So when I come back next time, I ain't got to have that conversation. All I can say is, like, yeah, man, I done did it again. Now it becomes a repetitious thing. So when that doesn't work, I find that new up-and-coming minister who would preach that fiery sermon that made me feel good, so I'm going to go try his anointing to help me get this thing out of me. And so I got right. to a point where I realized it is finished. Jesus has already done it all. Elgin, your flesh will be a consistent battle for you to fight. But Jesus has defeated sin and death. Right. Just chill homie and it's really hard when you get to a place when you're used to doing things constantly to get to, to gain victory to understand that you already have it particularly if you're within the church system man and you you're constantly hearing these sermons week after week about how you have to do all these things to get Jesus' approval, to get him to love you, to get him to give you victory. You, you, you constantly caught up in that mindset, in that frame of reference, that when somebody comes to you and says, yo, well, didn't Jesus say this is already done? Didn't Jesus do this? It becomes that cognitive dissonance aspect where you are unable to let go of that falsehood and embrace the truth. And I know we got some callers. As a matter of fact, Nathan, man, why don't we go ahead and bang these folk out, man? All right. Caller from uh, 763, area code 763. You are live. We appreciate your patience. Thanks for holding. Uh, what is your comment? And who do we have on the line with us? Oh, this is Sean from Minnesota. And, um, oh, what's, up, yeah. what's going on, fellas? God bless yeah, bro, bro. Man, uh, all right, I like the way you all put the Ephesians together with the Corinthians, and I just want, I got a testimony, but I want to start with this scripture. We're talking about spiritual warfare. I got to go back to Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. That goes back to the weapon with everything being spiritual. The devil is a spirit. God is eternal. The, that puts the weapon as a lie. That's the, the biggest lie. The biggest thing Christians face is a lie. You got a lie saying that God ain't real. There's science from different people. We got people lying on us on the job that make you want to react in the flesh and either engage in argument or physical confrontation. 
we got lying in the church with the word across the pulpit with people teaching certain forms of tradition and like uh, one of the brothers said, one of you all said witchcraft with the uh, or you another tactics that they use. It's a lie and the lie, each lie is going to keep people confused and separated in the word of Christ. That's this example with different churches, Pentecostal, Baptist, they don't, they don't even like each other for whatever reason. Baptists teach you could do whatever you want to do, Jesus would give you anything. Mm. Seriously. And then even mm. going back to the history of, of Kojic Church, the guy, the black man that founded the Kojic Church, he got kicked out of the Baptist Church for his preaching of being more holy. And to this day, the two churches don't get along to associate. And but with my testimony, I had a, uh, I just got transferred to another location. And you know I'm an auto mechanic, right? And the uh, mm -hmm. assistant manager at the old location was just making them lies out of thin air. You know, it take a general conversation, make it a lie, basically start a paper trail. So I got transferred to a better location making more money, but they sent this trail of paperwork. So after a week, the new manager say, we went through it, and he say, I haven't seen none of this from you. You know, from the manager and assistant manager, and he popped up at the old location and came back with a story like that place looked like a dungeon, ain't nobody at the front office. So basically, the, the assistant manager, prayer, that's how you got to fight it. The city, you got to, instead of engaging, worrying, like you said, the battle is already won. When people lie on you so bad that it makes you think, why are they doing this to me? That's the spiritual warfare because it affects your spirit. They want to, they know they can't physically touch you. They want to affect you spiritually and emotionally to get you feeling down and confused. That's where the prayer comes in and to know that God will handle all false accusers, all liars, all enemies that start rumors that, because it comes out of hate. And it even happens in sad church, not just outside. It could be black on black, white on black, whatever. It's, it's all formed from the same lie. And that is the, the weapon is the word of God. Like you said in Ephesians, you got to put on that armor of God. You got to trust that God is going to vindicate you and make a fool out of the liars. That is the weapon, one big lie. Mm hmm Yeah. And... I want to say, I like, I mean, I really, me and my wife have been sitting up here listening, you know, I got it on speakerphone, and I have never, we have never heard um, scriptures put together on the subject and make it so clear. And like um, one of you all was saying with your apartment, you're getting anointed when the, the uh, pastor should have set you down. That's what he should have did and told you, because I was a bachelor too in the church. This is how it's going to be. You're going to have it thrown at you. And because when you sing in the church, it don't look good when you're bouncing from woman to woman inside the church. That's a bad look, and it's going to cause deception because women are emotional. If you get through banging her and you want to break up, you go to somebody else, then she's going to start talking. She's going to be, she's going to be upset. You know, rather it was her fault or yours. It's a bad look for the body of Christ inside of the church. And I have never met any church leader that will that is willing to break it down like that. You even have pastors that say if you're single, you could do anything. You could date somebody and drop them the next day with no problem. Well, actually, that's wrong because you're actually playing with somebody's emotions. Yeah. If you make you get it, I mean, you, it, it is. That's, and that's, that's another last of you know, a false doctrine. I'm glad that you got this website and radio show so we could put the truth out in the air for people that are confused. That's why I encourage, I signed up to your Facebook page uh, about a week ago, and I want to encourage people to read the Bible for themselves. They need to open a Bible and read these scriptures, not just on Wednesday, not just on Sunday. And... If they're not going to get the right answer from their pastor or their reverend, they need to hit you up on Facebook because you guys are all through the Bible. Seriously. Oh, man, appreciate I mean, that, brother. Appreciate that. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, that, that's all I got to say for the day, man. All right, man. All right. Well, appreciate you. Appreciate you, homie. Have a good day. You and the wife, man. All right. Uh, caller from area code 314-314. You are live on Real Talk Radio. Who we have with us? It's uh, Brother E. How you brothers doing today? We're doing good, right. brother. How are you? Thank you? I'm doing all right, man. Just enjoying the, the knowledge of uh, the wisdom uh, the Holy Spirit uh, brings to all brothers, man. It's, it's nice. But I wanted to speak on uh, <clears throat> the anointing of the doors and windows that, that is actually a form of witchcraft uh, through idol worshiping. You can't you can't anoint something unliving and expect it to be holy. That's that's pretty much idol worship. And uh, wow. as far as anointing your head with the oil, uh, what what really made it separate or holy, meaning separate, was that the people that were pretty much the only ones that would put oil on their hair. Everyone else would put mud, wax, uh, sometimes paste, but they would put oil on their head. And you had to keep your head oiled up, of course, because that's, that's pretty much how your hair goes. You got to keep your head oiled up, especially with the, the environment they were in. It was dry mm. heat. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> paste wouldn't work. Wax would melt. Some people would use tar, but the oil just pretty much kept your natural glow as you walk about society doing your thing. And, and, and the people were the only ones that were all their hair. So they were separated from the rest. Um, also, like I said, and, and I noticed a lot of uh, the fathers pulling a lot of people out of these churches because of the witchcraft that's been allowed, idol worshiping that's going on in the church. And no one is returning to Christ. And uh, when we understand uh, Big Bro, Christ, we know that he has left us with that spirit. He has left us with something, and that's the word. That's him. He left us with him, mm -hmm. the word. Mm -hmm. He is the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and, you know, and yep. therefore we still left with that word. So, yeah, like the brother from Michigan said, we have to read that Bible. We have to read that book front to back because it's all Christ. It's all him. From the beginning to the end, he said he was the Alpha and Omega. So that means when the Father said, let there be light, that was Christ. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he is the word. The Father sent him in the flesh for, for the people then, sacrificed him so that he can't be in the world for us. Because we are in these end times. We are. Because uh, uh, it seems like the... the uh, He's put that uh, arm on a lot of brothers to battle this slide. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but praise to the Father for brothers like you all. Um, just sit back listening. Oh, man, we appreciate you, brother, for coming through, man. Thank you, my brother. No okay. Appreciate you. All right, Nathan, what's up with you, brother? Um, I actually want to get back to a question I asked earlier. Um, and I think we need to get into that, that side of it. I asked the question, is casting out demons and spiritual warfare the same thing? And I'd like us to talk about that casting out demons part of it. Um, is, is that really spiritual warfare or is it just another form of spiritual warfare or is it just casting out demons is just that casting out demons? Okay, stop. Nah, I know what I think. I'm going to jump off, though. Stop. <laughs> right. What do you think, bro? What do you think, man? <laughs> oh, my God. Probably should have been ready, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was coming to you. Finish, finish your jelly beans, man. Go on, you know what I'm saying? Go on. Go on. <laughs> drop college, bro. All right, since, since y'all scurred, since y'all scurred. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh. Oh, now, oh, now we scurred. Okay, all right. No, it's scurred. Y'all scurred. Anyway, um, right. let me, um, let me say this. We, we are letting you uh, About uh, <laughs> casting out demons, because we see <laughs> casting out demons. Um, and I think from the last show, Elgin talked about, uh, 
if you uh, talk about the, the deliverance ministries and how deliverance ministries are set up and their purpose. And uh, could you share that story, Elgin, when you talked about the deliverance ministry? If you were a demon-possessed person, would you go into that? Man, you asked me to bring up stuff from 89. Well, I remember what you said. <laughs> All right, well, share, share what I said. All right, said. Elgin shared <laughs> about he actually had a, 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 a point to make. He said, if you were a demon-possessed person, would you willingly walk into a building that's set up that advertises itself as a deliverance ministry, which set up to deliver you from demons or whatever you are suffering with? Would you, as a demon-possessed person, willingly walk in there to be delivered? And is that our deliverance ministry is basically spiritual warfare ministries? I, and I say no. I say casting out demons is simply that, casting out demons. Um, the problem I have with that is that you have to know that someone really has a demon. And it's not just their flesh acting up. So how do you know if somebody really got a demon or, not, or if they just tripping? How do you know? How, how can you tell that difference? Let me tell you how you don't know. A demon <laughs> possessed person is not going to walk up to you and say, hey, I got this demon going on inside of me. What you think about it? They're not going to hold up <laughs> a sign. They're not making, you know what I mean? They're not, and it sounds like I'm being facetious, but I want to be clear to the listeners. Right. People who are possessed by demons don't announce that they have a demon. It, there's, there's, there might be a change in their character, a change in their behavior. But even with those things, you can't attribute that to a demon. It could be a chemical imbalance. It could be the fact that they, they, they have mental health issues. It could be the fact that they're just having a bad dog on day. So I am not sure exactly how to articulate uh, or, or to identify whether or not somebody has a demon in it. But what I don't think is, I don't think people who have demons walk into churches that are specializing in demon deliveries. It, it just doesn't make sense. It, it, it doesn't, even to this, I understand that people have issues of the flesh. And I believe a lot of what we classify as demon possession is nothing more than either uh, and I won't, don't want to say either, I, it, your addictions, works of the flesh, a lot of these things that we have attributed with a secular, and I hate that word, a secular diagnosis is nothing more than an outward work of the flesh or particularly a work of the flesh that you had continued to feed, like uh, sexual people who have sexual addictions. They didn't wake up one morning and become sexually addicted. Somewhere along the line, a seed was planted within their flesh, and they continued to feed that thing until it bloomed into sexual addiction. So it could have just started with you creeping through the old J.C. Penney's catalog, looking at the ladies in their panties and bras. And it grew to you watching porn on VHS, to porn on the Internet, to you going to sex shops and to sexual parties, and it exploded into sexual addiction. It didn't just wake up one morning and it was sexual addiction. You did something to feed the flesh with it. And I have a hard time differentiating, honestly, between to say what an actual person, bring it back around, with a demon possession is. How do I indicate that? Just to, to ask that same question that Nathan just asked. How do we tell? And I'm not sure. It doesn't mean that if I try to cast it out, and it goes away, oh, yeah, okay, well, they did, we were possessed. Oh, no, since the demon didn't come out, it's just the works of the flesh. Mm. And I think that's a big part of the issue. We like to say you got a demon, you got a demon, you got a demon, and we don't really know that. And I think that's the big question. How do you really know? We said it, well, uh, and Danny and the what's name said, you know, use the spirit of discernment. But, Everybody don't have that spirit of discernment. Now, when Paul was walking, uh, I wish I had that scripture hand. I know it's the Acts. He was walking, and the lady followed Paul and Barnabas, and he was with him for a few days. 
and they were speaking to these men are, 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 are you know from the most high and Paul got mad and called the demon out of her now the Bible never said she had a demon until it said that Paul or did it say that let me before I say that let me stop get the scripture go ahead somebody take I'm, I'm gonna find that scripture before I speak on that because I don't want to be wrong never, uh, I'm trying to find it so I think she did have it though and uh, I think that was when, yeah Paul was, was basically irritated um, and just turned around and said come out um, I'm trying to look for it myself yeah I got it I got it it's Acts 16 Okay. Acts 16, um, and starting at verse 16. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and he came out that very hour so Paul did not say let me put on my armor of God let me pull out my weapons of warfare he didn't say any of that did he mm -mm. what did he say mm -hmm. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and he came out that very hour it wasn't uh he didn't lay no oil on her he didn't slap her with a bible she didn't fall on the ground writhing and wriggling and, and crying out and spitting and snotting and spitting up lizards and snakes and all this different kind of stuff it said she came out that very and all he did was speak to the spirit he spoke to it just like Jesus did. Jesus spoke to the Spirit. There wasn't no long conversations. He wasn't asking the demon what they named. Now, Jesus did. He said, what is your name? Legion. And I'm going to get to that scripture, too. It's in Luke. We're going to get there, too. But they didn't have long, drawn-out conversations. They didn't uh, uh, go into all these different motions and all this. He said, he spoke to it. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. That's all it did. He, 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 got, he spoke directly to the demon. Right. Right. The, the demon didn't speak back either. Nope. They didn't have no rap, no conversation. A video, I think it's TV Joshua or, or Emmanuel TV on YouTube, where this dude is like holding long, drawn-out conversations with uh, supposedly or allegedly possessed women. Um, and there, I mean, he's having like conversations and asking these, this supposedly possessed woman what she did and how she did it and who she did it to and who she did it with and what for and how long. Asking all these questions of this demon. And then at the end, he finally, I guess, cast the demon out. After all this stuff. And if you go and watch it and you try to comment and tell the truth about their video, his followers will eat you alive. Your inbox will be full of YouTube messages if you try to say something of people protecting this stuff. And demons are real. De Nobody said demons weren't real. But this is a charade. This is a show. It's a show for TV. And it's nothing more than witchcraft. It's nothing more than manipulation. And ladies, you listeners who are listening, I'm not picking on you, but there is something that you guys have to be aware of, and I think many of you are. Many of these dudes, keyword dudes, men, prey on women in regards to these things. Because for women, a lot of your memories, a lot of the things that you've been through, have an emotional connection. So if he can pull on that those two things, he ends up controlling these women like puppets. He manipulates them, he takes advantage of them, and he should be ashamed of himself. But the problem is, once he begins to puppeteer these women, some of these women become some of his most avid and uh, vivid controlling protectors over his ministry. 
But we see this time after time how these men take advantage of women in this aspect. It's absolutely horrible. Yeah. But we know women are very protective. Go ahead, Rob. I, I've dealt with one of those type of pastors before, man, here recently, man. I'm not going to name him, but, um, you know, he, he's one of those those guys that, uh, that you know, teaches that whole, you know, demon hunting. And, like, his, basically, man, his, his entire ministry is built on fighting demons, on some Lara Croft Tomb Raider. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, his whole ministry is built on that. And um, when you challenge anything, um, remotely challenge anything about some of his doctrine that is questionable, that is, like, actually legalistic, man, I mean, he'll, he'll resort to calling names. I mean, you guys have seen that type of attitude. Once they can't really deal with uh, – the scriptural challenge, they'll, they'll resort to the ad hominem attacks, the name, the direct name call. Um, and then their followers, man, oh my goodness, their followers Crazy. will, you know, yeah, they'll give you the business, man. And they're very protective over women. They take a special liking to, to women. I've, I've seen exactly what you're talking about, bro. You know, it's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. and, and I was, you know, I brought that out just to, make the point that they didn't beat around a bush. It wasn't no nine-hour deliverance service. He said it, and it happened. It was just right. like that. And that is not spiritual warfare. He said he's given us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And we don't have to uh, argue with them and, and, and debate them and call them. Oh, I cannot think of this guy's name. It's a guy, an older guy, I think he's out of Kansas. And he had a TV show. Uh, actually, he's delivering people by... I'm going to try to find that and put it in the chat room. And I'm going to put it on our Facebook page, too, where he has deliverance sessions via Skype. Skype now. Come on, man. He can deliver you via Skype. Um, and, and what it is is you have to go on Skype. You have to send it to his PayPal. Once he gets it, then he'll do the deliverance for you. Over oh, and this guy said he he went on ahead and paid just to see what was gonna happen, and he said like he was talking to the guy he was all nice and uh, just all of a sudden he just got he just changed like he was a totally different person, um, and and a delivering through Skype. Now all these things, man, we because there's a market there's a market for this. Oh yes, people believe that they are oh, truly. Possessed, and, and, and we look at it as spiritual warfare. We, we, we believe it's spiritual warfare. We believe that going out, looking for people to cast demons out is spiritual warfare. Uh, we're going to set you free. You, you're going to walk in the freedom that God has given you, but it's going to cost you now. you got to pay a little bit. That's the only way you can get free is if you pay me. Um, and and if, if we can't see through that. You can't see the manipulation in that. Um, right. So, uh, uh, another question I wanted to ask is, what do you say to people who swear up and down that they have had, have been in spiritual warfare fights, that they were on their bed and they, they felt their spirit leave and they went and fought a demon? What do you say to people who swear to you that that's what happened to them? And you can't Stop tell them that it's what Man, I lay, mean, like, lay, 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 lay off that spaghetti before you lay it down. Because yeah, I know stop, people who had that. barbecue before you lay down. <laughs> who really said that, that this happened. Or they were in a trance. They were just sitting down minding their business. All of a sudden, they felt their spirit leave their body. And then they were went out or they had a dream. And they know that their dream was real because such and such came and said, man, I was going through it, but I woke up this morning and I was all better. Well, I had a dream that, that I was fighting. Somebody, I went over your house, and, and a snake came in your yard, and I started stomping on the snake, and now you feel better. God showed me that was spiritual warfare, and I fought for you. I mean, what do you say to that? How, how do you honestly deal okay. with a person who's being serious? Okay, we, we, let us answer the question, <laughs> will you? I mean, you asked like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> That's about 
Shitlin' tacos and stuff. Know your limit. Lay off the Hennessy. Uh, no. <laughs> Man, listen. Honestly, when people start saying stuff like that to me, I don't even address what they said, man, uh, unless they ask me my opinion. If they ask me my opinion, I'm hitting them with a question. I'm not offering my opinion. I'm like, are you sure that's spiritual warfare? Are you sure? And then not on a way, because if they bring it to you, they're already bringing it to you, feeling convinced that it's the truth. So they're going to operate from a stance of preparing themselves to defend against any attack to what they're convicted about. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 at most times, man, those type of conversations are very uh, fruitless. They're not going to go anywhere uh, at all. So I personally do not try to attempt to sway people. In the past I did, boy, let me tell you, in the past, I was like, man, that ain't Jesus. That ain't got nothing to do with the Lord. That's the devil. That's New Age. I would go into almost attacking their conviction. But what I had to realize is that these people are actually suffering and don't even realize it. They, they, they are absolutely in the midst of something uh, going on within them. And a lot of times these people who feel like that, bro, honestly have some sort of mental issue taking place within them. I don't, I, and it's a dream. I've had crazy dreams. I, and I got to be careful on how we deal with people who bring that to us. So me personally, man, I try not to even dance with them on them topics. Rob? Yeah, man. Like I said, man, <laughs> just uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't put too much uh, into it, man. I mean, because I know I know people that um, not only have you know they claim having those type of experiences man but uh, i know people that uh talk about one of their specialties is going to uh hunting demons and casting them out and stuff like mm, that man mm, mm. And, specialty. And I, I know, it's like they're specialty they, they go and and um identify demons and and people like they can see demons in people like you, you understand what i'm mm. saying and, I, and yeah yeah i just have yeah. I just have personally, man, I mean, you, you guys, your mileage may vary. I mean, people listening and calling your mileage may vary on this, man. But I personally have had a hard time believing it, <laughs> for lack of a better uh, term here. Um, because some of the stories sound just absolutely sensational. And I've never seen, and you know, in all my years, I've never seen anything, you know, um, remotely looking like some of the stories I've heard these people tell, man. You know, like you were saying earlier, I know you probably being funny, but, you know, spitting up lizards and all that type of stuff, man. But I've heard some, I've heard some outlandish stories, man, from, from people. And I just, I just have a hard time, you know, kind of dealing with that. Yeah, because these, sure. these people are, are, I mean, some of them be dead serious and will, I mean, like, serious, like spit, I've seen spit up lizards. Nah, I, I wasn't there. So I can't say if you seen exactly. somebody spit up a lizard or not. Um, mm -hmm. But I know my, my old my first pastor. He was a prophet, so called, um, and he used to say that exactly what you said. He could see demons on people, or he could see them falling, or he said he used to see angels too. But mm -hmm. you know, he said if you see, if you see in the spirit, you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it all the good and the bad. He used to see demons on people. Like he said, he uh, woke up one day. No, he said his wife, she said she woke up one day and and saw an imp run around to the side of the bed mm -hmm. and, and, and and kept trying to wake up her husband. And and you know me. <laughs> uh I this she was teaching the class and I raised my hands and said, What did it look like? <laughs> she said it almost looked like a gremlin, except it was taller. And, you know, I like to fell out. When she said that, it looked like a gremlin, except it was taller. Uh, she kept trying to wake up her husband, so said she got up and got her oil and just start praying in tongues, walking around the house, and then it left. And you know, it's just, and we're teaching these things that there's scripture. And I think the problem is we have elevated our experience over scripture. We elevate our personal experiences, things that we've seen, our things that we've been through, and we elevate that 
over scripture. I can't take away your experience. Like I said, I, I wasn't there. I don't know if you really seen somebody spit up a lizard and the lizard start walking. I wasn't there. But that's your experience, and that don't mean that it's scriptural. Now, does that mean that uh, just because it happened that it, I don't know? Okay. I, I, I don't know. Right. But. That, that's where I am, man. Yeah. Let's take these callers, yeah. though, man, because they're lining up. Uh oh. Boy, they're going to try to cast <laughs> Oh, them. Lord. Join. I a lot of callers. Oh. It's like the 661, man. I think this is John. John, this is you, oh. 661? Yeah, this is me. This is me. What's up, y'all? What's up, brother? You? Yeah, man. Just get the other caller, John. Man, go... <laughs> Let me talk, bro. Oh. <laughs> go ahead, John. I was just going to say, I was just going to say, um, kind of back up what Jonathan was just saying. We like to elevate our experiences over scripture. And that makes it valid to them uh, because they see some things going on that may be similar, but it's not necessarily in scriptures. And, and we can't find what they're talking about in scripture. Where have you seen anywhere? Because I, I have questions. If, like Jonathan said, he wants to know what it looked like. I want to know where did lizard come from. Like, is it anatomically possible for you to spit up a live lizard out of your mouth? Like, how did he come through your throat? Where did he come from? Like, that's what I want to know. Like, what happened? Did y'all follow him and see where he went? Where, where'd he go? Did he go find a, a lady lizard or something? What happened to him? I'm asking questions. He said that he followed a lady lizard. All right. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> Me too. Oh, God. And, and, people wonder, and people wonder why people look at Christianity the way they do. Yeah, yeah. Why do you look at that kind of stories like that? Mm -hmm. Right. It was all a dream. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> John, you got anything else? Get these other callers. Let, 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 let him stay on the line. They just take the callers, bro. Yeah, just take the callers, Call. man. Caller, area code 318. <laughs> 318, you are live on Real Talk Radio. We're talking about spiritual warfare. Who do we have on the line with us today? Hello, everybody. This is Brenda Caldwell in Shreveport. Good morning. Hey, I'm, I'm going back. Hi. How are you doing? I'm going back to when you were talking about the control of women in, in, the, um, in the church. I was a member of, uh, of a, well, I guess it was a small church. Um, uh, it was a 15-year-old ministry. It had about 50 to 60 people that showed up on Sundays. Um, only about 15 of them were men. And uh, that that showed up, and I, <laughs> the pastor asked me a question because uh, the ministry just was not growing. I mean, it's 15 years old, and people come, and people just keep up leaving. And uh, so he asked me, "What do I think would uh, would help the ministry?" So if they didn't have an outreach ministry, so I, I I expressed that to him, and he asked me to start it. So I did, and I took uh, about 10 ministers and had them to go out and into the community and and uh and we got about 47 people saved in about an hour and uh, we of course brought that back and and he got intimidated and of course very disrespectful thought i was the one to take over i mean it's just it was just a mess and i'm not the the, the woman who is you know i don't I just think everybody is on a level playing field. I think the pastor is the pastor. He's just one part of the body, and all of us uh, are important to God. And uh, there, these women, of course, after uh, the pastor and I had words, and, and I started teaching, uh, you know, I went to him again about the tithing situation, you know, uh, uh, and, and express to him what I found and, and you know, and, and that tithing is just not for the New Testament church and all of this. And, and he basically knew where I got the information from after he couldn't talk me out of it because I, was, I came armed with scripture. He, of course, told me, yes, that's true. He says, but this is how we get money into the church. And the, there, there are some uh, some other ministers in there who knows the same thing, but uh, they, they, he asked me to not express this to the, the church, you know, to other, other members of the church. But these other ministers in there know the same thing, but they, they have taken that code of silence and went on with it. And I'm just not that person. So when he he uh, he expressed, started talking about the situation over the pulpit, and all of 
these people, basically women, who I, I do their hair and all of that, they shut down. No communication. Stop coming to the salon. They cut me off completely. So it, it, this is the demon that we're talking about that's operating in the church. It's the control of, of the minds of, of, the, uh, of, of Christians. It is horrible. And how in the world are you helping the membership when the, the person with the microphone, the power that be, uh, behaves this way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it, go, it happens church to church. In Every fact, single they time. can't. Oh, oh, absolutely. I, and from, from uh, pastor to pastor, there's so much mimicking and control going on even in that unit. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's my little 20%. Okay. Yeah, no, thing. What about, Go ahead. <laughs> I got one more question. What, what about the laying on of hands, uh, you know, at the so-called altar and pushing people down claiming it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit? Mm. That's, that's we, another we, thing that I see. <laughs> that's a whole show. <laughs> that's next week's show. <laughs> yeah, next week's show. Yeah, oh, well, my goodness. That's another thing that is just, it, it's hard. We're going to be addressing this. Sis. Thank you for calling in. Okay. All right. You guys have a day. Bye-bye. And, and I would like to say, like, dealing, okay. dealing with that stuff right there, that, us, how we're dealing with it, that is what spiritual warfare is about. That battle of dealing with that control aspect, that is actual spiritual warfare. Us combating this right now, we are engaged in spiritual warfare. Explain. And people don't realize it. Huh? Explain that. Because these things, if people, we don't see that. These are being controlled by the principalities and the powers in the air that's controlling all of this stuff. And we're coming against that by our teaching. Our sword is our only offensive weapon, mm -hmm. and we're using our sword as the Word of God. And we're teaching the Word of God properly in context, using the Scripture. That's our, that's our, our sword. Yeah, we're, combating, <laughs> we're combating the powers that be, the powers that are in the air. When he talked about putting on the whole armor of God, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That's the people. We're not wrestling against them. And we have to realize that. Once we realize that, then we won't be so, so quick to be upset when someone comes against us because we realize we're not fighting them. We're fighting that power in the air. That's what we're fighting. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in the air. That's what this is about. That's what, that's what know what your enemy is about. Exactly. exactly. Right. Yeah, and, and I think the saddest like part, the, one of the biggest issues, man, when it comes to these topics, man, is how it has been turned into such a complicated thing. It's, it's the very same thing that happens when people are discussing the, the gospel. They turn it into this huge Encyclopedia Britannica type thing where it's all these different layers and all these different holes and loopholes and circus flips and things along those lines. The same thing with spiritual warfare, man. It's about knowing your enemy. And your biggest enemy, your number one foe, is you. It ain't them. It ain't we. It ain't him. It's you. It's your flesh. And one of the beautiful things is that the way the Spirit will do it, the Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth and actually lead you into places where your flesh will be exposed and shown. Because you're going to have to come face to face with some things in your sanctification process that every believer right. goes through. You're going to right. have to deal with your flesh at some point in time. And if you don't have fleshly battles, you need to begin to question your faith, question who you are, because you should be battling. And, and one thing that Nathan said earlier is about the struggling with the flesh and struggling. You should be struggling. I agree with that. But there's also another dynamic. There are certain parts about your flesh that you didn't even realize that was an issue. You didn't realize it was a problem until the Spirit revealed it to you. 
there's certain things that you go through that you are about you in your sanctification process that you may not even be aware of that is an issue, but the Spirit will reveal it to you. And that's mm -hmm. when you are going to have to deal with it. Yep. And I just like right. just what you said, man, it's a process. It's a process, and we got to remember that, too. Yeah, process. All right. Uh, still got callers lined up in the queue. Uh, area code 731. Take them. Take You're live. 731, who do we have on the line with us? Um, Katrina, good morning. <clears throat> good morning. This morning. is Katrina. Yes. Hey. I was just uh, thinking about um, the spiritual warfare. Um, when Christ himself, um, when he had dealings with, with um, with the devil when he took him up, you know, when he was on the fast for 40 days. Um, and he went into, but the only thing that he did was um, speak the word. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I was sitting here and the scripture came to me. It's in Psalms and it tells us to guard our heart, our mind, because the wellspring of life comes from it. And um, like the brother just said, you know, we have to keep ourselves in check because we got flesh, you know, that we have to deal with. And um, you know, I'm losing my train of thought what I wanted to say. But um, I had, you know, it was a scripture that tells us to cast down those things. I'm paraphrasing it, that be not, that come against the word of God, you know, cast them down. Things that come on your mind, you know, when people, that's speaking what God's word says, you know, that comes against it to, um, you know, whether it's yourself, your flesh, whether um, uh, it comes from someone else. Um, I don't think that it's a lot of stuff that people say that is spiritual warfare is spiritual warfare. I think it's dealing with, I, I, I think it's dealing with life itself. <laughs> it's a battle, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. going about their daily, you know, being able to deal with life, not being an overcomer in life. I mean, because we can't see the spirits, but we can see the actions and the things that are taking place. Um, I had a lady that was telling me, um, I had some things going on with my daughter, and I know it had something to do with witchcraft, but anyway, she was telling me that I need to go in spiritual warfare about it, and, um, I was thinking, you know, hey, I was already doing it, because I, I pray about it, you know, that's about all I know to do is pray, which is the most powerful thing you can do, and so I asked her, I said, well, what do you mean? What do I need to do? <laughs> she couldn't tell me. Mm. So I'm like, I bet. Um, they make it so complicated, like there's some formula or something that you have to, but it's, it's not complicated. I mean, you, you got the word and you got prayer. Uh, that's about all I know. I mean, the word and prayer and, and keeping your mind renewed. So... I was just listening in to see, was it, <laughs> to, to see, uh, what is spiritual warfare then? Is it something else? <laughs> so that's all I had. I just, I, I just, I wanted to tune in to see what was it then. Appreciate it, sir. I'm done. Appreciate your call. All right, yeah, that's all. Um, I, I think. Everybody, yeah. body. Go ahead, Rob. You got it, Rob. <laughs> No, nah, man, I think, because she made an interesting point, man, about, um, you know, it's almost like a lot of these people that, that claim that they, you know, specialize in casting out demons or whatnot, it, it's, it's almost like it's a power that only they have. You see what I'm saying? Like it's, it, it's, it's something that, it's, it's like something that they're gifted with, like, you know, they're only, they only have this ability to cast out these demons. So then you go to these deliverance services where somebody ha has, either been paid by this church to come into and, and, and hold these type of uh, uh, services and then, you know, they're, they're laying their hands and knocking people down. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it creates some type of illusion, man, that some, you know, these people have this special mutant power to cast out demons where all <laughs> we have to do is, is, is pray about it. <laughs> I mean, really, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. 
He said mutant powers. This ain't X Men only. I feel you. Know? Right. But you understand. You, you understand what yeah, I mean, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Certain people get to lay hand, hands and knock people over, you know, in the spirit, and you know, knock them down, and make them, you know, fall backwards, and throw a sheet over them, and all that type of stuff. Not everybody can do that. You know what I mean? That's what it. It just, you know, creates this whole, you know, illusion, man. They ain't anointed for that. Right. Anyway, I I, I yep. want to talk about because something she hit was so powerful, man. When she talked about Jesus, when he was tempted by Satan, that is the ultimate spiritual warfare, right there. Uh, let me let me read this uh, Matthew four. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No. The scripture says, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, He will order his angels to protect you. And they will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say you must not test the Lord your God. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him, for the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil went away and angels came and took care of him. You see, that to me is the ultimate of spiritual warfare. When you are tempted to do things and you fight it, um, and, and Jesus resisted the devil and the devil fled. Jesus said, get out of here, Satan, and he left. So when you come against these things in your flesh, and it's a little different, but it is the same thing. When you can resist the devil, the armor of God, like we talked about earlier, is defensive. It is a defensive weapon. And John said the only offensive weapon we have is the word of God. And Jesus gave back the word of God right to Satan, threw it in his face. That, to me, is what spiritual warfare is. Jesus didn't go looking for Satan. Satan came to him. Amen? Amen. Let's get these other callers. <laughs> Amen. 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 I'm sorry. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for giving us the opportunity to... Uh... Oh, okay. Go ahead and respond. Go ahead and respond. No, 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 no. I just want to say amen, brother. That's all. <laughs> all right. All right. Eric Code 518-518. Appreciate your patience. Thanks for holding. You are live on Real Talk Radio. Hey, what's going on? It's Andre. How y'all doing? What's up, Andre? What's, what's up, up Andre? Andre? Listen, man. Um... You know, my my last pastor was uh, I, I I would say she thought she was an expert at uh, spiritual warfare. You know, she would come into church and tell us about these dreams that she was having and how she dealt with the dreams, how she was having different visions and how she dealt with the visions and stuff like that. I remember one time she said that in her bedroom, in her bed, she had a vision of snakes just uh, crawling around all you know you know all in the air and how she was snatching them in the spirit and back when I was in church you know that was like ooh she did that for me mm -hmm. now I'm like really are you serious you know I mean Elgin hit it on you know hit it on the head perfectly he, he was like you know sometimes some of these people really have certain mental issues, and narcissism is definitely one of them. To be able to tell people that, you know, you do all of these supernatural things and, 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 and have them worshiping that person, she'll, say, she, she'll tell you in a heartbeat, you know, I, I will never um, take God's praise, but you won't turn it down either. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What? And, 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 and it's just... <laughs> And it's, and it's just crazy. It's just crazy some of the things that, you know, she would come to the church, you know, saying, you know, after she done, you know, she, she couldn't sleep because she'd been in visions all night long and, you know, then, you know, then top it off, you know, and say stuff like, never again will I accept another $20 or a donation, or, you know, um, to the church. You know, I don't, I'm not on salary. I, you, you know, I, I, you know, I fight all night for you people. 
people. I mm. prayed all night for you people, man. And 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 for y'all to put twenty dollars in the donation plate, I'm better than that. God, mm. you, you you know, God made me better than that. Wow. <laughs> so, basically, what it all boils down to, at the end of the day, people don't see it, but it is what it is. It's all about the do re mi. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, man. You got charged for delivery. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. gotta pay for it. Like, you know, that, that PayPal dude, we, you know, we were talking about earlier. That's, that's crazy, man. That's just, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really, it's really oh. easy, man, to just do, do so much of this stuff, man. You know, why would you charge somebody if you, if you really, interested and invested in um, ridding someone of demonic possession. You know what I mean? You're going to charge for that? Okay. PayPal. Set up a PayPal account for deliverance. Ridiculous. Huh. Huh. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I wanted to share with y'all today because, you know, you know I'm, I'm listening to the show and I'm like, you know something? Every time these dudes do a show, it reminds me of my old pastor. I got to say something. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same shit. Don't make no doggone sense. Nah. It don't matter. All right. Nathan, what's next, brother? You got yes, another sir. one? Yeah, we do have another caller. Uh, caller take that, take that, take that. Area code 314. <laughs> <laughs> 314, you are live on Real Talk Radio. Yeah, what's the deal, brother? This is brother here again. Oh, okay, brother, brother you back with us? Yeah, I'm back with you. I had to take care of a little business, but I was still listening to the show. But, um, yeah, that's, that's that goes back to uh, idol worshiping. Uh, usually, like, the uh, when, when I've had a lot of sisters and brothers come to me, <clears throat> people come to me and tell me, well, yeah, I used to have dreams about <laughs> about the, the demons and whatnot. Well, my first question is, what do you have in your house? You know what I'm saying? All them little, mm -hmm. uh, them little idols that you have in your house that you think make you, them little African masks, the little, the little <laughs> white angels, not the white angels, but the angels, period, all up in your house, even that weird Jesus picture with the bloody heart. <laughs> what do you have in your house that you may need to get rid of before you start, you know what I'm saying, telling me other things because once again, what people don't understand is not the it's not the picture, it's not the doorknob, it's not the 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 not even the building. The the temple is you. You're the temple. You're the one that has to to to, to get rid of the demons that's that's surrounding you. Them little trinkets that you got that you think that that keeps that you put all your faith in. This gonna let me win this. Mm, you kissing it and, and doing all that weird madness. The father don't like that. Because then he okay, you 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 want that for your power? And then now you now you talk telling people, now you're coming to brothers and sisters like you and myself saying like, man, I just I'm fighting these demons. I can't I can't get rid of them. Well I mean look we you stop kissing that locket you got around your neck thinking it's gonna deliver <laughs> you from you know what I'm saying? Stop <laughs> all that. E, let me ask you a question. I just want to clarify something real quick. Um, I think I understand what you're saying. Uh, when you say if look at the things that's in your house, are you saying right. like the things in the house are evil in and of themselves, or it's just that they are worshiping those things, not knowing that they're worshiping them? Um, right. So they're worshiping those things. Right. They're worshiping those things. Okay, so and it's you not wrong to have those things, right? Right, no, 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 it's not wrong to have those things, but once you start putting the worship on those things, okay. then you might okay. have a problem. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I'm yeah. speaking for the brothers and sisters that walk around here with crystals around their neck and will say that, well, I use this crystal to heal and this crystal to, mm -hmm. to like, nah, man. What do you, these are the same brothers and sisters that see these demons in their house. Or have these demons around? What what do you what do you have in your house that you're, you know what I'm saying? Because you know we gotta understand people getting 
this lie is, is, is thick and people are using everything along with, with the book to to think that it's what they have that's going to help them to, to, to battle whatever they, they dealing with. And it don't work. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. You know? And even the authors themselves, it's a demon that's attached to it or whatever. Not necessarily attached exactly. to it, but in their mind. In their mind. You know, it's a little mind game. Ain't nothing, it's just a piece of crystal. It ain't nothing. It's an inanimate, inanimate object. It's nothing. Exactly. Else. In their mind, the demon's making them think that the power's coming from their crystal. Exactly. Witchcraft. There it is. Yep. You know what I'm saying? There it is. But, uh, and as far as the, the, the people that, that get paid for that with the, the prosperity deal, we know that's, that's, that's messing with mammon. You know, that you, you can't, it's good to have money. I mean, you get paid for your works. But once you start making this an elaborate, you know, as if you, you, you pay, you're taking your faith from the Father, blessing you through your ministry because of what you're speaking is righteous as compared to, oh, no, you must be doing something wrong if you feel you got to argue with your, your uh, congregation about how much money y'all putting in this, this collection plate. You understand what I'm saying? It ain't mm -hmm. it ain't the ministry no more. It, it, it may be you. You might want. I'm, I'm <laughs> speaking pastor or whatever. You might want to change uh, what you're doing because now you're putting your faith in mammon. You complain to you. You fear. You use and fear, which we wasn't mm -hmm. meant to have anyway. And you're worshiping mm -hmm. mammon instead of the father. And how you go get your bills paid or keep your jet or however it is, whatever you're doing this. You know, using. Uh, the money for, but yeah, you 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 worship in mammon, and that's a no no again. The, the, the another thing about the lies is this idol worship, and it, it falls right into the the lie, making you actually think that the power is in this inanimate object. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Thank okay, bro. Well, we appreciate you calling, Nathan. Appreciate it. All right, appreciate you, bro. Um, I, I we we only got less than a half hour left. I'm gonna hit on a couple of things that we hit on, but never really talked about it. Um, now I don't know if you listened to our show on dominionism, the first one and the second one. We really talked about how dominionists really use spiritual warfare as um, a tactic in order to go out and take over. They believe that we have to use spiritual warfare to pull down city, uh, uh, I guess, demons over to a particular city. You know, I talked about it earlier in the show. Uh, Dominionism teaches that God can't come back until the Christians take over and we set up a, a theocracy here. And not, well, I don't know if it's just the United States or if it's worldwide. I believe it's worldwide, but it must start here in America where we must take over and this must be a Christian nation for real where everything is ran by Christians and these apostles uh, take over, but they use spiritual warfare as a form of it. There's a, uh, I don't know if you've heard of them, Google Joel's Army, where they go and, and they have a physical, where they're getting a physical army, a real army, and then they're having a spiritual army where they're going and doing, where they do these prayer marches, these prayer walks, where they will march around these communities to uh, pull down this certain demon, or, you know, if you're in a city where uh, crime is bad, or where, where where sex is bad, where voodoo is bad. You know, if you go to one of these places, that's your job to go and march. And what about singing? You know, we say when the praises go up, the blessings come down. So you have to sing and use that as a form of spiritual warfare, or, or they use music as a form of spiritual warfare. Uh, and they go back to when David played the harp, and the evil spirit went away. And they will use that to say that we have to use music as a form of spiritual warfare. That is one of the weapons of our warfare. What scripture is that? What? Uh, where music is a weapon? No, what? <laughs> Nathan, you fine. Somebody has all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they tell you fire, bro. <laughs> uh, anyway, how we use music as a weapon uh, of our warfare to go through 
and pull down these demons over these cities and all this different type of stuff. Um, so what are y'all thoughts on that, especially with these dominionists and, and this, uh, how they use spiritual warfare as a weapon of our warfare? <laughs> we get in? Go ahead. The funny part about it is, man, when you think about the music aspect, every, and, and I hear people say it all the time, every Sunday morning, you know, Friday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, they, they was banging Meekville, you know, Luther, all this type of stuff. But come Sunday morning, <laughs> we got to turn on the gospel. We got to turn on the Jesus. We got to have the gospel music on because they want, they're setting it up thinking in their mind that Jesus is going to be more pleased with them. And I hear people, I see people do it all the time, that when they're having a bad day, and something is going wrong in their life, they'll they'll try to use music as a way of fighting the spirits in the air that's swarming around them, which is just nuts. Like, this is Ghostbusters or something. I, I don't know what in the world they get from that. <laughs> but you, but that, that's the mentality that they have because that's what they've been taught within churchianity, that that's how they combat and deal with spiritual warfare is by using music. And the thing is, Jonathan... When we talked about this in the last show on spiritual warfare, it was a, a gospel artist, a really effeminate gospel artist, who had this this uh, song about spiritual huh? warfare. And what you notice is a lot of them have songs about uh, taking things back. Matter of fact, the chick just did a song not too long ago, breaking all these chains. What, what's her, what's her name? Uh, Rob? Was it Tasha Cobb? Something like that. We're breaking you know over. what her name is. Yeah. Act like he don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted me to name the person. He wanted me to name the person. I don't know what her name is. Break every chain. Break every yeah, yeah, that's all. That's, that's what I was trying to avoid was the thing <laughs> with Rob instead. Because I know he was going to say <laughs> But you see how they do it. This dude actually sang the song. I'm, I like it. Right. I'm so done. But it's, it's all about dealing with spiritual warfare. Man, it's just wrong how they use music. And I really need you never to sing on this show again. We've warned you numerous <laughs> times. For, uh, that's not your lane. Man, why y'all trying to block me? <laughs> hey, y'all so I mean, you me? know, the music, makes you, uh, the music makes you feel good and everything, you know. Um, so, because uh, I heard the homie, uh, what's his name? I'm a name this dude, um, G. Craig, the homie G. Craig Lewis, um, once that gave an account. <laughs> he once gave a story. Uh, you know, uh, 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 again, a secondhand account, of course, um, of where he was uh, personally casting out a demon, uh, actually a, a bunch of demons uh, from. Uh, a, a R&B singer. I think it was the boy from uh, that group from the 80s, Color Me Bad. Um, they had a song on the New Jack City soundtrack that kind of blew up back in the day. It was actually the 90s, like the early 90s. Anyway, um, he was saying how he did everything he could to try to get these demons out until he had to take, it was this one particular song, I don't remember the name of the song, that he had to play and only when he played this particular song did the demons leave the, the, the guy. So he was saying that the demons were played into him by music. They have to be played out by music. So he said the only way, that's what he said. So, yeah, so the only way that these demons came out of Homeboy um, from Color Me Bad was he played a particular uh, gospel song, and only then, Stop, after man. all night, yeah, yeah, bro. That's on YouTube, homie. All night. Color me good now, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that was uh -oh. uh oh don't start singing. <laughs> I ain't. I've been warned. <laughs> but, but think about that, though, man. That is yeah. crazy. What did yeah. Jesus say? He said some of these, when, when, Jesus, when the disciples went to Jesus and said, how come we couldn't cast out these demons? What did he say? Some only come out through fasting, and, and prayer. But they, the disciples weren't going out looking for demons. 
Right. They weren't going out looking. They weren't looking for demons. They were going preaching the gospel, and they happened upon some demons. So some demons came upon them. They didn't. They weren't looking for demons. They were going out to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, in the scripture, you read of their seven sons of one Sceva, uh, these Jewish exorcists, and they went looking for demons. That was their quote-unquote specialty. And when they came across a man possessed, the demon inside said, Paul, I know. Jesus, mm. I know. Mm. Well, who are you? Who are That's you? That's good, Pastor. And it said, That's he good. whooped them. He whooped them. <laughs> and they ran out. He naked did. And One man. Mm -mm. One man. Jesus did that. <laughs> he no, beat him down. Word. He did the Michael <laughs> Jai White on him. <laughs> so you come across to somebody who's really demon possessed, they're gonna be strong now. Strong. S K R S K R O N G. They're gonna be strong. They're gonna get you. S K R O N G. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So be careful if you out there and you're listening to us and you say we just out here just talking to be talking. When you keep going and thinking that you're really casting out demons. Keep 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 doing that. And when you run across a real demon that's going to read you up. Then you're going to really have your faith tested. When you ain't got your <laughs> armor bearer next to you to help defend you. When uh -oh. your armor bearer gone. What you going to do? Uh -oh. What, what you going to do? do? Who you going to call? Mm. Yep. Well, you hey. know, they, don't need, they don't need armor bearers to cast out demons, man. Because, you know, nine times out of the ten, they're going to delegate that to one of the their uh, underlings. So they ain't going to get their hands dirty anyway. Anyway, um, yeah. So let, let, let me go to Jude oh, real quick, man. Uh, I want First the Jude or second Jude? Uh, third Jude, chapter 58. But um, when, you, on, go, when you get a chance, Come I actually on. want you to read the whole chapter of Jude. Read the whole. It's, it's not that long. <laughs> not that long at all. Uh, 25 verses. Uh, read that whole chapter. But start at verse for this uh uh, show, I'm just going to start at verse uh, 8, and it says, Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak even of, evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, angel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body, <laughs> about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him railing, reveling accusations, but said, The Lord rebuked you. <laughs> but these speak evil... But these speak evil of whatever they do not know and whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain, have run greedy in the air of Balaam, for profit and perish in the rebellion of Korah. Be careful. We're just talking about going after demons. Mm. Quit laughing hey, at me. <laughs> No, nah, it's, it's uh, no, nah, I wasn't laughing at you, I was laughing. Because it's, it's people that have, have set up whole ministries behind that, man, and, you know, it's just, uh, it's amazing, man. I, I was, I was, uh, hesitating because I was just about to drop a name, but I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it for the vibe. <laughs> so, so these people that are setting up these deliverance ministries, uh, and, and, you know, I believe that some people, their hearts might be in the right place. They might have good intentions. They just, they might truly want to see God's people set free, but they're doing it uh, a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Because you don't have to set up a special place, this building or this hotel or wherever, for people to come to you. I believe when you're out in your Christian walk and your daily life and when you have your meetings or whatever and, and, and you come upon these people, you have to be ready and be able to accurately, and you don't have to be no long services, no long drawn out thing, play no specific song. If you have, truly have the authority of Christ in you and you know it without fear, be able to tell a demon to come out and that demon comes out. If you know that person really has a demon, like we said earlier, that's the first thing you have to do is to be able to recognize that the person truly has a demon. 
And I think that's so important. We casting out these demons, and these people ain't got no demons. No, I feel you, man. Mm-hmm. It's, and it's just, I think the one thing that we have to continue to reiterate, man, is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is not offense. It's it's only defense. It's defending yourself, man. It's using the spirit to gain you truth because it's going to lead you. It's just, but you have to come about it at the right angle in order to be able to attack it. And it's just really crazy how these deliverance ministries, and we didn't even touch on the financial aspect of these delivery ministries, man. The, the money that they make is absolutely bananas off of these things. And it's really a lot simpler than what people have made it to be, man. It, it, spiritual warfare is not a complex thing. The complexity is going to actually be dealing with your flesh and moving away from the falsehood that you've been indoctrinated with as far as what spiritual warfare really is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I, if, if you haven't, I, man, this stuff is so crazy. I, I would suggest that you Google Bob Larson. I, I put it in the chat room, his website, which is boblarson.org. And go to, he got a, a section that says, got demons take the demon test to find out and the first step that you need to do to take the demon test is you have to give him some money (laughs) that's it the first step in your journey to new beginning life is to contact us and send an email and you can you have to buy it now for your personal session is buy now and it's through Skype. This is the guy I was telling you about Skype. And they accept Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover. EBT. Uh, yeah. And, and it's just crazy. <laughs> he says, take the spiritual demon test, but you got to pay for the spiritual demon test to see if you have a demon. The demon ain't going to let you pay. Taking a demon test may be the most important spiritual decision you make. This test is the result of more than 30 years of research and thousands of hours of in personal ministry with troubled souls. Through his vast experience, we have been able to design this test so we may quickly determine an individual's spiritual condition. Did that say anything about uh, the hey. scripture? Studying the Bible and reading what the Bible no. says? No. No. You got to <laughs> take his test. And oh, first you got to take the test. You got to pay for the test now. And you're going to pay for the test. And then if you're concerned about the test scores, you pay money again. And that's when you set up your Skype interview with Bob Larson. Just boblarson.org. Just, just Google it. I'm telling you. I'm just you. tripping about the part. I'm just, I'm just tripping on his experience and his authority that he has and not one reference to the Bible. No, no. You have to visit him at his Center for Spiritual Freedom in Phoenix. Um, you got to attend one of his Spiritual Freedom seminars. Uh, you'll receive a referral for one of our do what Jesus did in a healing and deliverance team. It's it's just a lot. Spiritual demon test. And, so, and the ironic the ironic thing is it's called spiritual freedom but it's really spiritual bondage. He got a school of exorcism. I I'm gonna stop. You just go to that website and check it out. Uh, International School of Exorcism. <laughs> exorcism. <laughs> crazy. What? Uh, exorcism. Exorcism. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any 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 final thoughts, guys? It is finished, well, man. The simplicity of the gospel is you fighting your flesh from the position of victory, not to gain victory, but from already having it. Understanding your position in Christ and your identity in him will defeat all of the so-called spiritual warfare myths and errors in teaching. Fight your flesh. Rob. (laughs) Cosine. Nathan. I, I, I just wanted to say that knowing that spiritual warfare is each individual's 
uh, against their flesh. And and I want to read this, go out with this scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, reading out the New Living Translation again. Uh, we are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And I love that version of the Bible that explains what spiritual warfare, what the spiritual or weapons of warfare are. And in with Johnny. Yeah, did y'all talk about uh, binding and loosing? Nope. Uh, that's the sure portion of it, too. Um, you know, uh, but binding and loosing is something that uh, I advise everyone to uh, do a little study on. You can go back and check out our old show, Binding and Loosing, but that has that has connections to spiritual warfare as well, where we think we can bind up demons and, uh, you know, loose blessings or whatever. Um, and the question that keeps coming up is, uh, if we're binding these demons and we're binding the devil, who keeps letting that joker loose? Right. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a form of, another form of man-made spiritual warfare. It's binding. I bind that devil right now. I bind this spirit of infirmity. I bind this and bind that. Yeah. Okay. Next week, uh, I think we were talking about the anointing. What it is? That the anointing uh, is all subject to change, or we're talking about slain in the spirit one, um, but yeah, just tune in next week. Hey, give us your show ideas, you know, we kick that around, so you would be right, that's what we talked about, uh, talking about, but like you said, it's uh, subject to change, but you know, listeners, that give us your show ideas, you know. Yeah. John, why don't you pray us out since you came late? Heathen. All right. Uh, most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, another show, another um, powerful message um, that your people were able to discuss. And it's very important that people really understand what true spiritual warfare is. And we thank you for even giving us the knowledge and the insight to even know now what the difference is and uh, we're not just sitting on this knowledge where we're sharing it and we're sharing it for free and we hope that someone was touched and we hope that someone was blessed by these words on today and Lord we give you all the glory all the praise all the honor in Jesus name amen Jesus name amen amen and amen thanks to all the listeners everybody in the chat room we appreciate you guys thank you we love you thank you thank you thank you we out Thank you for checking out this episode of Real Talk Radio. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel and Facebook page. Or drop us a line at 4realtalkradio at gmail.com. That's the number 4, realtalkradio at gmail.com. Man, send your comments, concerns, criticisms, or show ideas. We would love to hear from you. Till next week, we out. We have a problem.